that he was going to try something that supports children and supports families with young children. And that's what he did. And I don't know if he thought the program would last as long, long as it has. And you know, it's still on. It's on, uh, some public stations carry it on the weekends, but it's also on, I think, public stations have a streaming service now, right? PBS Kids Streaming, and it's on there. And it's also on Comcast, not Comcast. Uh, it's on Prime Video, too. They, they don't want to tell me because it's competitive. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's on, it was on Netflix. I don't know if it still is or not. It, it's on something else. You, anyway, you can get Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood any time of the day that you want. Before you had to wait till 5 o'clock or 12 o'clock <laughs> to see it. Now, you can get up at 3 in the morning and watch Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And, uh, and now, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood is creating a further audience for Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Children discover that, then they go to, to discover Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. So it's getting uh, re reborn. And, you know, it is evergreen. The program, I always like it as Wizard of Oz. You know, you, you can watch Wizard of Oz, and it never seems to get dated. And I think that's the same way that Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, because the content is so pure and deep that he uses on the program. He, he studied child development. He had a degree in child development, a degree in music, and a degree in theology. And all of those disciplines worked together when he wrote scripts for the program. And he